Hello? Hello? Is that how to say? It is, it, indeed, yeah. Yeah, I'm on Roman, so nice to meet you, man. Nice to finally get to chat to you. Yes, it's finally uh, good to uh, chat face, well, not face to face, face to voice. Yeah. Yeah, great, man. Um, so, yeah, we've done the introduction. So we're both massive Apex Twins fans, of course. Yeah, so we're right. just going to do an interview with you about the old blog, the yeah. Land Chronicle. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Awesome. Right, I'll start with question one. Uh, how long have you been into Apex Twins music? Um, if you think about it now, it has to be about 20, about 22 years, something like that. From, from the late 90s, anyway. Yeah, so it's been quite a while. Yeah, but yeah, that's a long time. It's yeah. about the same year, about 20 years as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are about the like, same sort of uh, age bracket as well. There's all who are, you know, quite heavily in, into him, really, you know. Sort yeah. of the second generation of fans. Yeah, I met a, I met a guy online called um, Unsaved. He's a musician as well. And um, he's been into Apex since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've spoken through the site. I've spoken to, like, quite a few people. And, you know, they said, oh, well, you know, I've been a fan since, like, 93 and stuff, you know. And tell oh, me awesome. about their, their gig experiences and stuff, which is quite... Quite cool, yeah. Okay, um, next question. What made you want to make an Apex Twin blog? Uh, well, a, cu- a couple of reasons, really. Uh, I've, I've probably been thinking about it for years, because I know there's a few sites on the internet, but there's never been one that's, like, had, like, as much information, quite as much information as I'd like, and I thought, well, uh, no one else is doing it, so you know, maybe one day I'll do that. I don't really think I, I would, but because of COVID and everything, you know, you have had a bit more spare time and thought, well, you know, na- now or never really. So I just, well, one night I just started doing it and, you know, I did one, I did one article. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, and then, and then the next thing is like, um, you know, I just got sort of uh, got into it, you know, typing away and thought, well, you know, this is quite fun, actually, you know. But it's, and the other reason is it's sort of bringing two of my interests together, you know, sort of like learning about how to do sort of like back-end coding for a website and stuff like that. How to do the coding, too. Yeah, so, like, the ultimate goal of it is to sort of, like, integrate it with a database, so everything together, you know, so all the track names are there, all, all the, the interviews and images. Yeah, it's just a good flash of interviews, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so um, that, that's the end goal, really, it's to sort of, like, uh, just collate everything together, really, so, you know, every, everyone can just... Because, you know, I, I enjoy it myself, I've, I've, I've searched my own site a few times, and yeah, it's yeah. Art, quite interesting, you know, because I forgot I wrote it. So. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Um, I've got the next question. Yeah. What are the most interesting things you learnt about Richard from collecting and sharing these articles? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much. Uh, well, one of them just recently was that he had a cut, um, cut out of Norman Schwarzkopf in in his in his old flat. Which who's was, that? Norman um, Schwarzkopf. Yeah, 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 and Storm and Norman, the uh, Gulf War. Um, oh, right. general, yeah, so it's quite nineties and um, yeah. Yeah, there was there was, there was a square pusher uh, interview and he had a. Did you, did you ever watch the soap opera Neighbours? Yeah, yeah. He had, he had a picture of Hal Bishop on his wall uh, in spring. Oh, uh, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Hal Bishop, yeah. That's what I was thinking, so yeah. what was the guy's name? Norman Schwarzkopf. Yeah, Norman Norman Schwarzkopf. Oh, uh, right. Which I, I think means blackhead in German. Oh, uh, right. Um, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just let me think of the, the, the things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I think the, uh, one of the things, oh, it's always when you have to think about something, you always sort of... Uh, look, it's, it's obvious stuff like the tank and a submarine. Yeah, and, I, think, uh, uh, I think I think some of it, it's like, what's interesting is that he's got a bit of a sort of reputation of being a sort of a liar and a, a fibber. Yeah, but I think it's not all the case. I think I think there's some stuff I've done research and found. Well, actually, that you know that's true. 
that he said and did such and such, you know. Yeah, he, he did study electronics in college, didn't he? But he yeah. didn't, I don't think he made so much of his own gear as he made out. But no, I, I think he... I, I used to think that guy, thing, yeah. that guy's a liar, but nowadays I tend to think like, yeah. well, he's just joking, he's just having a laugh, you know, he's harmless. Yeah, he's not, yeah, he's not I think he's think guy, is he? Yeah, there's nothing, like, sort of uh, malicious behind it. It's just like, I, I think, like, to, to, if you're doing hundreds of interviews continuously, there's only a, a finite amount of things you can say, isn't there, really? So, yeah. Uh, you can probably just think making stuff up for fun, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very exciting for you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's just there's just a vast amount of things really. I mean, there's perhaps there's probably two main things to to list that I found out for one. Right? You know, it's quite interesting. Really. Can, can you think of any off the top of your head? Um, yeah, like uh, I think uh, oh, maybe not off the top of your head. Maybe I've I've been drinking. I've had before. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps when you, um, if we did another interview in the future, I'll, I'll come back and. Okay, okay. Yeah, next question then. Okay. Uh, you're one of the well known fans who asked Richard questions on SoundCloud. So, what do you remember from this time? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. Um, well, it was like, I think it was 2014, and and um, there was a thread, wasn't there, on. We are the music makers. I don't actually, you know, I've never posted on that website, but I know it's quite a good effect and resource. Yeah, definitely. Everyone makes fun of it, but it's the place to get the latest information and news on it. Yeah, I, I keep an eye on it definitely. sometimes, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, people post interesting stuff on it, so it was like some guy, I forget who it was, said, um, you know, there's this SoundCloud um, artist, and, uh, you know, I think it might be. Apex and you know what you oh think. Yeah. Like, so uh, we're on it and, and it's like immediately I, I was convinced it was him you know it's just this just something about his music that you don't get with other people's music mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah you, sort of, you just think this is so what, what track did you hear first do you I remember what track it was I, yeah I, 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 think it, I think it was either 22 Pearl or Utopia Oh, uh, yeah. Which was renamed Consciousness Utopia, wasn't it? Or, yeah, so. Yeah. And, um, well, what I remember of it is frantically refreshing for, like, the next, like, how many months it went on. Yeah, so we, those tracks must have been really old, but they, were, they still sound fresh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I couldn't, I couldn't really get my head around, is, uh, you know, you're a teenager and you sort of, being that productive and you know probably at his age I was playing with Lego you know <laughs> still you know but like he's cranking out all these tracks yeah um, hundreds and hundreds yeah. of tracks like the and, uh, boy on toast and that, that sort of thing yeah you me when he was 13 I, c- I can believe that I don't think it's a lie no no I, I, I don't think it is no because if you've seen uh, you know, if you read the interviews, he's like 20 then, so, yeah. you know, it's it, it, totally reasonable that he'd be, I mean, we've seen that, he, you know, he shared where he got his, you know, synthesizer from Gak, didn't he, was it, with the DX100? Oh, right, it was a receipt, was there? Yeah, receipt. What, uh, what was the date on that? That pop. His, his mum bought him a synth when he was very young. Yeah, like that's young, right. Uh, and, 100? Yeah, that's right, and uh, yeah. he shared that on that. Cyro Bonkers interview. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Correctly. So, um, yeah, so what I remember about it basically is that um, just refreshing continuously because it's like, crisp, you know, if you're in, into his music, mm. uh, it's like a crisp, you know, it's like having a Christmas uh, every day, you know, a new surprise, <laughs> you know, and it's just really exciting what we're going to get next, you know. How long did it last, the SoundCloud dump? Because it wasn't overnight, was it? It was just. No, I think, well, it was quite intensive for a few weeks and months, wasn't it? Where yeah. we were getting, like, about, like, four or five tracks a day, maybe, or maybe more. And then it's, like, peed out till it was sort of, like, the odd one every month or so, you know. And it's been a sort of ongoing process. But mm-hmm. it's, the, the real fan cloud dump was from, like, 2000. Was it 2014 it started? And it was mostly 2015, I think. Yeah, by you, was it? Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over over summer, it was just and uh, I was talking to my mate Colin, my mate, uh, my best friend Colin. Yeah, he's the person who really 
really got me into Apex Twin, really. And, uh, you know, we were, we were talking over Messenger, like, have you heard this track? And, you know, he's uploaded a new one. It's just, it's just fantastic, you know. Because I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that um, he's he's had this, you know, he's sort of been famous for having this vast sort of uh, archive of tracks. And you think, you know, I'm never gonna ever get to hear any of them. So I think I've always like thought, wow, that'd be great, you know, if that happened. But I never thought it actually would, you know. Oh, bro. Um, all right, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, yeah. What's your favourite Apex Twin record? Uh, what? No, that is pretty good. Okay. Cool. I think it's, I have to say, at the moment, it'd probably be, um, probably I Care Because You Do, maybe. Just at the moment. I mean, I Care Because You Do. Yeah, I mean, it changes, yeah. it changes frequently, you know, so. No, it's not a bad choice for me. It's not a bad choice at all. Yeah. Um, okay. What about yourself? Oh, um, myself. I'm I'm into P at the moment. I'm yeah. Like, uh, the what what what's that EP called? Clap EP. Uh, Clap EP. Yeah. P uh, yeah. and the uh, yeah. MT Mike tuning track. I, I forgot the name of it. It's just it's a complicated name with numbers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Those, those two tracks I'm in love with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mike yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna ask you about that later, actually. Yeah, um, I mean, um, I think yeah. that's that's the sort of question where it's like, you know, like it could literally be a different record every day. You know what I mean? Mm. And then I was going to ask you, uh, do you have a preference for a, a favourite era of Apex Twin? So not um, just one track in particular, but the favourite, like his early years, or say nineteen ninety five kind of like kids because you do era, or his laptop era, drugs, or the piano. Uh, yeah, I think. Mm. Um, I think, like, basically, I think maybe the early to mid-90s. But I think, you know, that's not so much a comment on his music, but more comment of, like, my sort of, like, nostalgia of the time attached to it, you know. So, yeah. So sort of when I listen to that music, it sort of takes me back to sort of like a time when I was probably a bit happier, you know what I mean? So oh, I, love all, I love all of it, you know, regardless. So, you know, I'd say I have a... It's like preference for that era, but, you know, not really. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, would you consider writing for the Apex Twin Wikipedia article? Because you've got all these articles, and um, I guess would you consider, like, writing a biography, like a little biography of Apex Twin? Would you be into that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd probably rather prefer someone else to do it, someone who's sort of, like, more sort of, like... Um, What's the word? Objective about it? Because, like, oh, I'm yeah. like, obviously dead biased, aren't I? You know, so, I'm going to say, oh, you know, he, he's great and everything. But, like, um, if someone used the material that I gathered and that, I'd be, you know, I'd be really happy about that, you know. So, okay, it's yeah. it's a good, good cause, but, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you know one day. Because, yeah, there's a really good collection, brother. Yeah, it's yeah. Some, if, if someone came along and said, you know, can you help me with some sort of project or whatever, I'd be more than happy to, probably, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, the next question, we already talked a little bit about it, but what do you think about the whole market tuning thing? Because Apex has recently, well, not recently, I think he's always been interested in market tuning. Yeah. But um, I think, recently, it's become more of a thing. Uh, yeah, I think... I've been mean, taking the left back to him. Yes. Uh, I think, if I remember rightly, the first micro-tuning track... Um, it was like analog bubble bath free track that he, he uploaded to SoundCloud because he oh, right. did a comment saying that it's my first experiment with microtuning. Make, make yeah. push there. And I think Thor 2 might use quite a lot of microtuning. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, I don't really know enough about it, but I think um, anything to sort of like make your music distinct and interesting, you know, it can't be a bad thing, can it? I mean, how no, many. You're right, you're right. Sometimes I don't think too much about the technical shit, but you know, yeah. it's about the emotional shit as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, not, not, not to say it makes standard tuning obsolete, you know, um, but, uh, you know, wh whatever works for you, you know. Yeah, that leads into the next question, which is, uh, what is it do you think that makes Apex and music stand out from the crowd? Uh, I think this is sort, sort of 
something that for me is probably like on a really subconscious level. Like I can't really put my finger on it, you know. But I think that's that's some of you know. I, I think I should say it's quite a motive music, and it's it, it's for me personally, it creates a lot of mental imagery and uh, sort of like abstract thoughts and feelings. You know, that I don't get through a lot of you know most other music. I and I don't know why, you know. A sort of um, you know, people might think, oh, well, you know, you're you, you, you're too obsessed with one particular type of music or yeah, person. Yeah. But um, there's just something in his music that uh, it, you know, it, it's got it's got that um, you know, the, the sound bit, uh, um, pretentious. It's got that. You know, a bit of a genetic as well, wasn't it? About yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you, Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't write this question down, but I just thought of it. Um, yeah. Have you heard of synesthesia? I've seen colours from you. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've heard. Well, there's a thing, isn't it? I mean, I haven't really seen much of a reference of it in his, in, in his interviews yet, but I know I've heard that he said he's had it. Yeah, like yeah, that's one of the first things I found out about him. You know, that apparently he's got he's got synesthesia. So maybe you, you ever feel colours from music like ever? I, I don't mean every song you ever hear, but is there any particular piece of music? Yeah, of course. Feel? Like um, you know, I sort of sometimes think, well, that, you know, that music might sound a bit sort of like uh, greenish or bluish and stuff like that. But, oh, yeah. You know, I don't think what I'm experiencing is synesthesia, or how do you pronounce it? It's just a sort of natural mental process sort of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't suppose it. It's, um, I don't think it surprised me if you actually had it. You know. But, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Idea, I, anyway. I was going to say, I was going to say, the, the fact that it's mentioned. Yeah. Um, that makes me feel like a green kind of colour. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this, I'll have to show you this this article where there's. Um, you know, people associate sounds with certain shapes, and apparently, oh. like most people, associate like a really spiky uh, shape with a certain sound, yeah. and a certain round shape with another sound. And this is across all cultures and uh, you know ethnic backgrounds and everything. It's quite interesting, really. So there seems to be some sort of like um, deep subconscious uh, thing going on, you know, with that sort of thing. They were not aware of. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of mysteries to the universe, isn't there? Yeah. Just to never ever find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, what's your favourite article that you have in your collection? Um, I think there's, I think if I remember rightly, probably there's, there's a feature music article from 1993 where. I think Is that the, the one guy, with the sampler? The big sampler? Yeah, that one, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um, I like the fact that the, the guy just concentrates on the music and and sort of like a bit of the gear and stuff and you know it's a lot of a lot of the press articles are just like hyping you know and and, and sort of like uh, it's a lot of hyping, bullshit you know, the press, yeah it? bullshit basically yeah and it's like it gets a bit sort of like thing it's like there's only so many different ways you can call someone like sort of like, electronic Mozart or whatever you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, last question then. Um, apart from these back screens, what other music do you like? Um, well, I, so, I suppose like, uh, I like all the sort of traditional sort of brain dance reflex stuff, you know, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Any, like 90% of stuff on there, you know, like old warp stuff, you know, sort of, you know, those sort of record labels. Anything recently are you going to? Uh, well, as you, as you know, I've been talking to you about the new C uh record. Yeah, yeah. That's and um, yeah, which is like really good. You know, it's really good that he's still. What's it called again? The C Fax um, Box Steady. Box Steady, that's it. Yeah. I've been listening to it yeah. as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, so that he can still, you know, create music of that standard, like uh, this far into his career, I suppose. You know, so that's really promising. And uh, I spoke to Andy actually on on Twitter um, earlier this year, and he he said he's created like about forty tracks or something during lockdown. Okay. So I expect more more um, albums. And also, I've been listening to uh, more you know Mike Paradinis 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is good. Which you know. is, I'm Welsh myself, and I heard uh, Mike Paddy must have been staying in Wales somewhere. Yeah, sort of um, South, South, uh, South. I think, I think it's, it's, uh, it's like a, near Swansea, there's a place called the Gower. Yeah, Gower, Mitchell, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's a place. I've been there a few times. Yeah, I, I was, look, you know, because I'm always curious about these things, I was looking about the, the, um, the name of the album, this little village in Wales, and it looks really, really nice. So, you know, yeah. no wonder he's been able to sort of like create music based around it. Okay, um, I think we'll end it there, mate. Um, but it's been great to chat with you. And yeah, we'll no, put this on fantastic. YouTube. And, uh, yeah. yeah, with your permission. Yeah, of course, yeah. That would be great. I'd be interested in to hear it back because. You know, I don't really, you know, you don't often hear your own voice, do you? So. <laughs> no, you were worried that you said to me in the messages before I called you that you were worried about your accent and stuff, but... Yeah. You, yeah, I know you're from but I didn't expect you to have a little flat accent for some reason. I, I know, did, really yeah, no. I've known you for a while, and... Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's a nice surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's <laughs> interesting, isn't it, yeah. Oh, well, okay, thank you. Cheers, mate. See you again sometime. Okay. Yeah, no problem, Mark. Uh, see you. See you, Dave. Okay, bye.